few minutes and go over the homework questions I had assigned for today. So questions 30 to 35 are just about understanding the difference between the terms skew and parallel. So in the picture, the line CB and the line HG, notice the line CB and the line HG, they are both on this rectangular plane right here that I am pointing to. They are coplanar. They are, if you will, the edges of this rectangle. I suppose you could think of this kind of like a barn or a house, and this is part of the roof. So this line CB and the line HG, they are in the same plane. So the directions say, assume that lines and planes that appear to be parallel really are parallel. So in fact, because they're in the same plane, number 30 is true. I know those are parallel. So taking a look at number 31, the line ED is down here. So maybe I'll draw it. So here's where the line through uh, points E and D would be. And then the line HG is up here. So notice these can't be parallel. Now they don't intersect. I suppose if you think about this, if you will, as I don't know, call this the front of the barn. ED is on that plane. But then notice HG is way on the back of the barn, on the roof. So these lines are not going to intersect, but they are not parallel. So this is false. And it's an easy way to explain it. Uh, this is false. They can't be parallel because they are not in the same plane. They are non-coplanar. So number 30, that one's true. Number 31 is false. And why? Because those two lines are not together in the same plane. So you could say they're non-coplanar. Those are non-coplanar lines. So question number 32, the plane AED. So AED is, if you will, the front side of this barn and FGH FGH, those three points name the back face of this barn. So that's true. Those are parallel. Here's the plane ABH. So ABH, if you will, it's the roof kind of on the back side of the barn that I'm pointing to here. And the plane CDF. CDF is this side of the barn right here. So understand, they can't be parallel. They do intersect. So that's false. So planes either do intersect or they don't intersect. And here's how they intersect. Remember, a plane extends forever. So this roof, if this roof extended and continued forever up, eventually this side, if it's extended and continued forever upward, eventually they would cross. So this surface right here, there's the roof. So if you extend it forever upward, and this side of the barn, if you extend it forever upward, eventually they will intersect. Those, those then can't be parallel. So line AB and line HG are those skew. That's a true statement. Yes. So let me erase the ED and the HG for a second so I can highlight the new lines that I care about. So the line AB is here. The line HG would be here. So these are non-coplanar lines again. AB, that line is, if you will, I suppose you could think of it this way. Um, not only is it part of the roof, but it's also part of the, the edge, if you will, of this front face of the barn. And HG is not in the same plane. It is one of the edges for the back face of the barn. So these are not coplanar. So those would be skew lines. That's true. They will not intersect. So last, the line AE and the line BC. Again, let me erase those lines and trace the new ones. So AE is right here, and the line BC is right here. So are those skew lines? That's false. Those are not going to be false. Notice they are coplanar. They are both in this face the front face, if you will, of this barn. So because they are coplanar, they are not parallel. So because they're coplanar, eventually they will intersect or they will cross up here if we extended those lines forever. So those can't be skew lines. They are coplanar. 
They are in the same plane, so they either have to be parallel or they have to, to intersect. Those two, eventually, they will intersect. So let's look at the algebra style questions. So I wrote down, uh, I wanted you to try questions 12, 13, 14, 19, 20, and 21. So all of these questions, you can rely on the same formula to write your equations. So that formula is what we call point slope form, which looks like this. So we will substitute the slope that we need here into the expression, and then to determine the line, to fix that line in the plane, I have to know a specific point that that line goes through. And for questions 12 and 13 and 14, that's this point here given to you, point C. So the goal in 12 and 13 and 14 was to write a line that is parallel to the given line, and it goes through point C. So if I want to be parallel to this line, I need to use that same slope. So my slope is one third, and if I'm going through the point C, I have to substitute zero in for Y1, and I have to substitute the six in for X1. So Y minus the zero, that's just Y. And then over here, X minus X1, X1 is six. So you could simplify it further if you wanted to, but that's a perfectly acceptable answer right there. So it's the same thing then in question number 13. So I want to be parallel to this line. So again, I have to use this slope of one half. So using my model, I want to take y minus the y coordinate of the point that my line will go through. That's y minus 4. And then here, I want to take x minus the x coordinate of the point that my line will go through. So I have x minus the negative 2, but that just turns into x plus 2, and we're done. There's the equation of my parallel line. So last, again, in number 14, I want to make a line that's parallel to this line, but it goes through the point 6, negative 2. So to be parallel to this line, I need to use the slope of negative 3 halves. So I'm going to start then by taking my y value and subtracting the y coordinate of the line that, of the point rather, that I want my line to go through. So y minus negative 2, that just turns into y plus 2. And that equals my slope times x minus the x coordinate for the point that I want my line to go through. There are your three lines that are parallel to the lines that are given in those questions. So the difference in 19, 20, and 21 is I want to find a line that goes through the point P, but I want it to be perpendicular to this line. So what I need to do then is to determine the slope of a perpendicular line to this line. So I don't want to use the two thirds. What I want to do is find the opposite reciprocal of that. So I need to flip it upside down and take the opposite of it. So the slope that I want to use on my perpendicular line is negative 3 halves. So my y coordinate then is 6. So I'll do y minus 6. The x coordinate is also 6. So I can do x minus 6. And there is the equation of my perpendicular line in point slope form. Again, we call this point slope form. I'll just reiterate, this is point slope form because to write it, you need a slope, that's represented by m, and you need one point that the line goes through. So we call that point x1 and y1. So number 20, I want a line that is perpendicular to this line, and it goes through this point. So to be perpendicular to this line, I need the opposite reciprocal of 1 half. That makes negative 2 over 1, so I can just write that as negative 2. So that's my slope. So the y coordinate is 0, so y minus, I mean, you can write it this way if you want to. I won't take off for it. That's true. y minus 0, that equals the slope of negative 2 times x minus 4. So if you wanted to write it that way, it's fine. I'm just going to simplify it. That's just y equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 4. It would be perfectly fine to simplify this farther if you wanted to. You could say y equals negative 2x plus 8. If you distribute the negative 2 through that quantity, that would be fine. So lastly, 
I want to be perpendicular to this line, so I need to use this line's slope of negative 2, and I need to find its opposite reciprocal. So understand negative 2 is really negative 2 over positive 1. So if I take the opposite of that, it's going to be positive, and I want to flip it over. So that's going to be positive 1 half. That's my slope. My y coordinate is 4 that I want my line to go through, so I'll do y minus 4 equals 1 half, and my x coordinate is also 4, x minus 4. There is the equation of the last perpendicular line in point slope form.